It's a good song. We, one of the things we enjoyed at this fellowship meeting was the loud singing. <laughs> There's a lot of little kids there, and a lot of them were preacher's kids, and it's like they had a contest who could sing the loudest. I mean, they'd be looking at each other and just their necks bulging, and it was, it was fun. Yeah, we had a good time. Uh, we've been looking on Sunday nights at uh, Keys to Spiritual Growth. Keys to Spiritual Growth. The um, verse that we're using as our theme verse is 2 Peter 3.18. I'd, I'd encourage you to memorize this verse. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. And uh, that's, that's what we're looking at is growing in the Lord, growing spiritually. And uh, we've seen that the master key is the Bible. That you're not going to grow without the Bible. The purpose, and this is important as well, is the glory of God. The, the reason we want to grow spiritually is for the glory of God. You know, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, that's what we want to do. Uh, he says, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So the, the reason we want to glow, grow is for the glory of God. And tonight we're looking at obedience. Now, obedience in the Bible are very closely related. Um, you might say that it's the key, obedience is the key to unlock the, the, the servants' quarters. Or, I was just thinking about it while we were singing, Obedience might be the key to open up the exercise room. <laughs> Probably all of us have had times in our life when we decide, I'm going to exercise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in shape. And three months later, we say, yes, I, I, I am going to do that. <laughs> I, I'm going to, and we think about all the things we're going to do, but you've got to get out the key and open up the exercise room and actually get in there and do it. Well, that's kind of what obeying God is. And, and, you know, if you think about obedience to the Lord, it's not like exercising, like just lifting a weight or something. It's, it's things like, you know, God teaches us a truth and we need to obey it, whether we understand it or even agree with it. Uh, so we're, we're looking at obedience. Really, obedience shows the reality of your Christianity. Uh, a person who's not at all concerned about obeying the Lord you wonder if they're, if they're actually a Christian. Uh, Jesus said, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Well, that's plain. That's plain speaking, isn't it? Jesus often spoke to people very plainly. <laughs> he called people hypocrites. Now, the difference between him and us is he knew their hearts. You know? uh, we're, we're not allowed to, to do everything he did. But um, he, he said to people, Why do you call me Lord, which that means master, and then don't do the things I say. He's saying, that doesn't make sense. And it's true. Uh, James 2 says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Now, the thing we've got to be careful of here is legalism. We don't want to do good works in order to think that'll get us to heaven. But we do want to do good works because we want to be like Jesus. Amen. And we want to glorify the Lord. Uh, you know, to get saved, the only way to God is by faith, not by works. Most religions teach that the way to God is by works through their church. <laughs> well, uh, it's not through our church, but it's through our Savior. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's by faith, not by works. The Bible specifically says that. To saved by faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, in, in Hebrews, he says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, we've got to come to God by faith, and real faith will change your life. You know, it, it's not enough just to say things. Real faith means you say it and do it. Uh, you know, we believe the Bible. That means obeying it for the glory of God. And there's probably a lot of reasons why we should obey the Lord. One is probably so obvious that I'm, I'm sure you're aware of it, I've, I've mentioned it already, it's because He is the Lord. <laughs> we should obey Him because He's the Master. Uh, that's who He is. And that means we're supposed to be the servant. You know, we sing it, He is Lord, you know, <laughs> but do we live it? 
Uh, do we actually um, obey the Lord? Uh, there's a verse in Acts, Acts, Acts 17, 24. I've been just kind of running past some. We will get to a, a scripture that I'll have you turn to in a minute. But Acts 17, 24, he's, uh, Peter is, uh, I'm sorry, Paul is there at, at Athens. And he talks about God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that He is Lord of heaven and earth. And he says, He, he dwells not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands. He said, this is not a physical uh, thing. This, this is the God of the universe. We, we obey Him because He is the Lord. But just as important, we, we should obey Him because we love Him. Jesus put it very simply when he said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. Again, you know, many of God's statements are just so simple. You, know, you can try and reason them away and explain them away and so on. But uh, this, is, this is not talking about legalistic obedience. It's not a list of rules. It's loving obedience. If you love me, keep my commandments. And, you know, we should be suspicious if a person says that they believe Jesus but they show, there's nothing that shows. There's no difference that's been made. Yeah, turn to 1 John chapter 2. Let me just show you a warning that God gives. 1 John deals with a lot of things that are evidences of salvation. Now, this is not works. He's not saying do these things and you'll be saved. He's just saying when you're a Christian, there's just certain things that are going to be, going to be true. You know, what's the old saying? If it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's probably a duck, you know? And if it talks like a Christian, walks like a Christian, it's probably a Christian, but not always. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Hereby we do know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. He that saith, I know Him, and keepeth not His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth His word, in Him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in Him. Uh, several times in the book of 1 John, he'll make a statement like that. We know we're of God because of, because of this. And uh, one of those is, is that of, of obedience. Uh, as we look at keys to spiritual growth, uh, obedience is one of them. And uh, to say we have faith and not to have obedience, is, you know, God says that, that just doesn't make any sense. Tonight we're going to look at an example of obedience. And I'll get you to turn to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It's the example of the man Noah. Now, we could go to the next verse and look at Abraham. It talks about his obedience. He, God told him to do something, he, he obeyed. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. I'm sorry, verse, yeah, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. You get Hebrews, James, 1 and 2 Peter, 1 and 2 and 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Let me just read uh, two verses here. By faith, Noah, being warned of... What did I say? Verse 6. Okay. First mistake the last two minutes. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. There's several important statements in that, that verse. One, uh, Noah responded to God's word. God spoke. He was warned of God. And he, he acted. Secondly, we see that he rebuked the world. Or the, the Bible uses the, the phrase, he condemned the world. That's an interesting one. We'll look at that. And thirdly, he received righteousness. He became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So, uh, let's look, first of all, Noah responded to God's word. We call that faith. Uh, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, probably every sermon I, I say that verse. Uh, because it, it's, it, it's so uh, uh, basic to our, our, our faith. The Bible says that Noah was warned of God. Uh, you want to keep your finger there in, in Hebrews, but we'll be looking several times at uh, the the record there in Genesis uh, chapter 6 to start with. Genesis chapter 6 tells us uh, about Noah and, and uh, chapter 7 and, 
and 8 and 9 about the flood and so on. Let me read you the, the original here. Genesis chapter 6, uh, let me read verses 11 through down to 14. He says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. I'll just, just stop reading there. Basically, God is saying, Noah, judgment is coming. Here's what I want you to do. Now, Noah responded to God. The, the Bible tells us. We read the record there in Genesis. He tells us in, in Hebrews, he was warned of God. He moved with fear. He did something. You stop and think about this. Most of what God was telling him, no one had ever seen before. <laughs> um, an ark, you know, build an ark. What's an ark? You know, uh, there's going to be a flood. What's a flood? Judgment is coming. Judgment. I mean, it, these were early days. Still, I mean, it, it's it's past creation, but uh, the world hadn't seen God's judgment. Uh, the world hadn't seen a flood. It's possible that the that the world hadn't even seen rain. You know, in Genesis chapter two, it tells us. Uh, well, let me see, verses five and six. That the, that the land was watered, uh, end of verse 5, the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Now, we don't know if that continued until Noah's time or not, but it's possible. That would be strange you know, for God to be saying, now, it's going to rain. What's rain? <laughs> There's going to be a flood. What's a flood? <laughs> Build an ark. What's an ark? <laughs> but... Noah responded, not because he understood everything that was going on, but because the Bible says he feared God. He moved with fear. Now put another word there to help you understand it, reverence. Noah reverenced God. He honored God. And man, we live in a world that doesn't. Noah lived in a world, world that didn't. And as Christians, if we're going to obey the Lord... It's going to need to be because we, number one, because we reverence, we fear the Lord. It's not going to be these other things that, uh, that we don't understand. It's going to be because we reverence God himself. We know that he is all, all powerful. We know that he is all knowing. Uh, we know that he's loving and kind and holy and just and true. And because we know who he is and his character, we say, whatever you say. That's what, what Noah did. If you read in Hebrews, the next verse, it's what Abraham did. These people of faith reverenced the Lord. He valued God. He valued what God said. Let me ask you, do you? <laughs> do I? You know, we, we need to, to apply that in our lives. Now, these are not, you know, it wasn't the ten suggestions, was it? <laughs> and uh, God's word is not just saying, oh, it'd be nice if maybe you tried this once in a while. He's saying, I'm the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. And there's specific things about our life that we need to understand and, and, and live them. I don't think I, I shared this verse. As we were singing, I was thinking about this verse. It's Hebrews 5, uh, 14. Strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. By reason of use. He's talking about getting into the exercise room and, and getting the exercise the obedience to the Lord, and it'll help us to grow. You know, sometimes we have comfortable situations for us as Christians. The time you grow is when you get into the uncomfortable situations. You get to the edge and, and you have to live by faith. Ooh, faith. <laughs> uh, you get to the edge and you, you've got to go past your own fear. That's when you grow. And I guess, I'm not an expert on physical exercise, but, you know, if you only do what's comfortable exercising, you're probably not going to get in very good shape. You're going to have to go a little bit past what you're comfortable with. Now, for me nowadays, that doesn't take a whole lot. <laughs> and uh, it, with faith, it might be the same. It may not be a whole lot you'll do to start with. But by reason of use, you'll be exercised, and you'll grow in faith. You'll grow in the Lord. Obedience uh, makes, makes such a difference. Now, God still says judgment is coming. 
And when God said to Noah, judgment is coming. Here's what I want you to do. Well, it's still coming. It's a different one now. He's promised he'll never judge the earth in that same way again. I guess the next time it's going to be by fire. Uh, and one of the things that was true about Noah that's going to have to be true about us if we're going to obey the Lord is he had to start. <laughs> you know, like exercise. It's no good just thinking about it. You've got to start. You've got to put the key in the door and, and get in that room and start exercising. To obey, we have to start. Uh, you know, for him, the, I don't know what all that involved, getting the wood or, you know, whatever, clearing a space. Um, but then he continued. He continued for 120 years. Man, that's a big project. I know my wife thinks I delay on things. Well, he didn't delay. He is working all, all that time. You know, there's, you probably have projects at home that need to be done. Maybe you've started and you haven't finished. Noah had to work 120 years. He continued. The Bible says, Jesus said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Uh, there's plenty of people who, who start even. There's others who don't even start, but there's some who start and then they, they quit. We use the expression, you ever hear the expression, they peter out? You know, that comes from the Bible, <laughs> from Peter. Uh, they, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Noah followed God's directions and he prepared an ark. Let me just read you some of those uh, things that he did in Genesis 6, verse 14, just for, for interest's sake. Uh, Genesis 6, verse 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. Now from what I understand, uh, that would be about 140 meters long, 25 meters wide, and about 15 meters high. And the Bible says um, in the next verse, A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in it a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Three stories in it. They've calculated that it was about uh, the, the equivalent of over, just over 500 railroad cars. Of, of material that it would hold. In other words, there's plenty of room. The Bible says in verse 20 that God brought the animals. He said, two of every sort shall come unto thee. And Noah didn't have to go out and collect them. Uh, God brought them. Uh, so here's this strange situation. And uh, Noah was happy to just believe God. Uh, obedience. Noah obeyed because he reverenced God. Noah also responded by faith. Because of his reverence, he, he, he operated by faith. He believed God's promise. Uh, in Genesis 6, keep, turn back there, uh, verse 17, Behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. God made him a promise, and uh, Noah was happy to believe him. Yeah, Hebrews 11 described it as to the saving of his house. That's what we read in Hebrews 11:7. 7. You know, this same thing was open to others. Uh, it's like what Romans 3.22 talks about when it says about how God's righteousness is unto all and upon all them that believe. You know, God's... God's promises, what God wants to do in people's lives, it's, it's open to everybody. And in Noah's time, it, I, as far as I can understand, it was open to everybody. I guess everybody could have got on the ark, but they didn't. It's upon all them that believe. We have to um, uh, believe God. Only those that believe God went into the ark. Now, I think I mentioned it this morning. Everybody believes something. It's not just believing. Oh, you've got to have faith. Well, no, it's not just faith. It's faith in God. Uh, we must believe God. Uh, Noah's obedience was, was very obvious. In uh, Genesis 6, verse 22, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Can you imagine if they started raining? We got to put the plug in. <laughs> now he did it all. He did every bit. Uh, he made sure that he followed uh, what God had told him to do. He believed what God had said about judgment. 
knew the flood was coming, even though he probably didn't understand it. He believed what God promised about salvation, you know, build the ark and all that involved. And then he did exactly what God said. Very important. You know, some people want to believe that God will bless, but he won't judge. You meet people like that all the time, don't you? Oh, yeah, the, you know, they talk about it. Everybody that's died has gone to heaven, you know. Uh, God's going to bless, but they don't like to, t to believe in God's judgment. Uh, Spurgeon said this, He who does not believe that God will punish sin will not believe that he will pardon it through atoning blood. I charge you who profess the Lord not to be unbelieving with regard to the terrible threatenings of God to the ungodly. Believe the threat, even though it should chill your blood. Believe, though nature shrinks from the overwhelming doom. For if you do not believe, the act of disbelieving God at one point will drive you to disbelieve upon other points. God not only blesses, God judges. And Noah believed God. He responded to God by faith. And like it says in Hebrews 11 there, because Noah responded to God's word by faith, Noah condemned the world. Everyone else was lost. Now, it wasn't, you need to understand, it wasn't Noah that, that condemned them. I mean, it was God's judgment. But he was saved. They were lost. Second uh, Peter 2 calls Noah a preacher of righteousness. I can kind of picture you know, Noah while they're building, you know, preaching to the workmen. There are probably crowds gathered around. He probably stopped and, and, and preached to them, you know, just verbally. But, you know, I think the main way Noah preached was by building the ark. That, that would have been a big deal. <laughs> People would have come from miles around. Judgment is coming was his message. He believed God. Stop and think about this. He would have hired carpenters who helped build the ark, and yet they would have perished. Can you imagine? Your hands laying the keel. Your hands helping with making the ark and saying, ah, I don't need it. You know, what a picture that is. The ark is a picture of salvation. One door. One ark. One way. And it, you need to notice when you read Genesis, the Bible says God closed the door. That's not salvation by works. That's salvation by faith. Quite often when they do the children's stories about Noah, they'll show Noah closing the door. Listen, Noah didn't close the door. God closed the door. And judgment is coming. Here's these people who helped build the ark, and yet they would have perished. Today there's people who do church work who don't know Christ as their Savior. Man, I meet religious people all the time who are out doing religious things. They even say it's for the Lord, for Jehovah sometimes. Uh, and yet they're lost. We need to believe God. We need to preach righteousness. You know, we need to be people. Uh, and understand this. Noah's stand for God would have offended the people around him. You know, and it, and it, it, it set him apart. To live and speak for God condemns others. And I know we don't like to be condemning. And I don't mean that we shouldn't be condemning in a self-righteous or in a bad way. But just standing for the Lord uh, is, is going to condemn others. You, you've seen it. I'll give you an illustration. If you've ever been with a group of people who are going to drink alcohol, boy, they don't like it if you won't drink with them. You know why? Because it condemns them. They know it's wrong. Oh, have a drink with us. No, I don't drink. Oh, come on. <laughs> and boy, they'll, they'll hassle you and hassle you and hassle you because it condemns them. Well, that's what standing for God does. Uh, we need to understand that. Uh, how, have you believed God? How are you preaching righteousness? Some people say, oh, you know, God is too severe. Well, look there in, in Genesis chapter 6. Uh, I, I think we're just beginning to catch a glimpse of how wicked people can be in, in our generation. Uh, in Genesis chapter 6, uh, this was a real pinnacle of, of wickedness in our world history, but... Uh, we're, we're headed back there. Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, that's the way it's going to be when Jesus comes. But um, Genesis 6, verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. 
For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. It, it was a wicked time. And he uses a phrase there, they had corrupted his way. These were people who knew God's way. These weren't just people who you had no idea. Do you realize there had been people alive then who had known Adam? I mean, there's no excuse for that. There would have been people alive in Noah's day who had known Adam. They had, historic, they had a historical tie all the way back to creation. You know, they, they could have heard from his lips, oh yeah, we sinned. Oh, it was a lot better before sin. <laughs> Wish we hadn't sinned. <laughs> you know, whatever Adam might have said, uh, there was, uh, it seems to have been a lot of demonic activity. Uh, in verse 5 it says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You know, look at all those words describing how wicked they were. Every imagination, only evil, continually. I mean, they didn't even take a break. You know? It was wickedness Full stop. It was a terrible time, but God extended mercy. Even while Noah was building the ark, 120 years, God extends his mercy. Well, the Bible tells us, I mentioned the verse, it's Matthew 24, verse 37, where he says, just listen to it. As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When Jesus comes again, it's going to be a lot like when when Noah was, was there. And you know, we're, we're headed toward that. People have multiplied. Um, they, they laugh at preaching. I was reading something the other day. A, a, a person who believes in creation was appointed to a, a position in the government, a, a scientific position. And others said, oh, now they're appointing clowns to, uh, to do the science. Just because he believes in creation. Um, but God is patient, but judgment is coming. And we need to realize that. Noah lived by faith. He obeyed God. His obedience condemned the disobedient. And the Bible says then in Hebrews, he was an heir of righteousness. Uh, Noah received righteousness. If you read the account, they went into the ark. God closed the door. Noah and his family were saved by faith. They believed what God had said. Uh, Noah received righteousness. Faith is believing and obeying God. Now, you can just never walk by the exercise room. You, know, you can just never think about it. But if, if you get into God's Word, He's going to bring things to your attention. And God's very gracious. He doesn't bring everything to your attention all at once. But he, he brings things to your attention. And that's what you need to obey. When you become aware, this is the way God wants me to live. Uh, he doesn't want me to do that. He wants me to do this. Uh, I need to have this attitude. Begin to put it into practice in your life. Obedience. That's, that's what, one of the things that will help you to grow. And it's obedience to God's word. You know, like I said, uh, only one ark, only one way to God. The disciples said, neither is there salvation in any other. Jesus said, I am the way. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, in Acts 16, 31, when they asked, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. You know, there's no other things. It's just Christ. Look at one more verse and then we'll quit. It's Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. We're talking about spiritual growth. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9 says... It's talking about our relationship to Christ. He says, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. The next verse he goes on, that I may know him. Philippians 3.9, does that describe you? Does that describe your desire that you have the, the righteousness, not of the law, but the righteousness of Christ. See, the difference is, is this. Um, religion, it's the idea, well, I can, I can keep all these rules 
and uh, you know, I can, I can follow the law, I can do good works, and, and you know, God will just look at me and just be so impressed with me. But you see, the, the righteousness God wants us to have is to say, I'm a sinner, I have no righteousness of my own. Lord, save me. And uh, by love and, and by grace, we live our lives, knowing that in me there's no good thing. Uh, you know, it's not by righteousness, uh, works of righteousness which we've done. There's a big difference between uh, the pride on the one side, saying, I can, I'm good enough, and the humility on the other, saying, only Christ is good enough. You know, Noah could have thought, now this ark, the way he's described it, this is, this is not going to work. I'm going to have to change this. Or he could obey the Lord and have it work. Uh, you know, we can, there's a lot of people who look at what God has said and say, oh, we've got to change that. Or we can live by faith. Obedience. Uh, there'll be lots of things, like Noah, that you won't understand. But listen, just believe the Lord. Uh, sometimes there's people that can advise you and help you to understand more, and God's Holy Spirit will help you. But remember that master key. It's, it's the Bible. If we're going to grow, we've got to get into God's Word. And if you get into God's Word... <laughs> He compares, God compares it to a mirror. He's going to show you some things that need to change. Okay, he's going to, you know, it, God's Word is, is a lot of things. And as you get into God's Word, there's going to be some things you're going to need to obey. It's not self-righteousness. It's faith in Jesus Christ. Listen, real faith will change your life. And that's what we want if we're trusting the Lord. So obedience is a big part of, of spiritual growth. Uh, like I read in, in Hebrews there, uh, we want to be exercised. We want the Lord to exercise us. Uh, that verse, if you're curious where it was, is Hebrews 5 and verse 14. Who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Um, so tonight, let me encourage you. As God brings things to mind, I just trust Him. And obey him. Well, that sounds like a song, doesn't it? Somebody should write a song, trust and obey. Oh, maybe they have. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will close with a, with a song. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you that you love us, and Lord, that you've made a way for us to know you. Uh, Lord, thank you for these examples of faith and men and women who've lived for you, like Noah and Abraham. And uh, Lord, help us to learn. Help us to, uh, to understand what you'd have us to do. And, and Lord, then to do it and to continue doing it until Jesus comes. Uh, Lord, thank you for each one who's here tonight. Help us to, to love you and know you. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.